Hello, in this video I'm going to introduce you to the R addition formulas. And so as usual I'm going to timestamp the different parts of this video, so if you want to skip through to where these formulas come from or an exam question at the end, then you can. And so to start off with, we'll say, well, why do we need to know these? What are these useful for? So basically, say we have an equation, okay, that's in terms of both sines and cosines. So something that maybe looks like this, we've got 4 sine theta plus 2 cosine theta. Well, by using these R addition formulas, they allow us to represent this just in terms of sine or just in terms of cosine, which makes it a lot easier for us to solve trig equations. Now, for these to work, as you'll see in a second when we go through this, we have to have the A and B, these numbers, okay, they have to be positive real numbers, okay, for these R addition formulas to work. So let's now look at where these formulas come from, okay, and so we're going to start off with this one here, where we've got A sine theta plus B cosine theta, and we're going to show this is the identical to R sine theta plus alpha, okay. And so to do this, the first thing I'm going to do is say, well, these numbers, A and B, these positive real numbers, I'm going to show that they can be written like so. I'm going to say, well, we could say that A is equal to some number R multiplied by cosine of an angle alpha. And I'm going to say that B, this second number, can be written in terms of, well, R multiplied by sine of some angle alpha. And so in both of these, the number R is the same and the angle alpha is the same. So why is that true? Is, can I actually represent any two numbers, A and B, in terms of R cosine alpha and R sine alpha? Well, yeah, you can, okay? And the reason is, let's rewrite this. Let's divide both sides by R. So we're going to get A over R is equal to cosine alpha and B over R is equal to sine of alpha, okay? And so by doing this, if I were to draw a right angle triangle, so let's draw a little one like this, okay, with a right angle here, and let's say this is our angle alpha, well, cosine of alpha is equal to the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse, and we know that cosine of alpha is equal to A over R, so this side must be A, and this side length must be R. And sine of alpha, which is opposite over hypotenuse, is equal to B over R, so this side here must be B, and the hypotenuse is still R. And so it kind of makes sense that if we've got any positive real numbers, A and B, we can create a right angle triangle that has side lengths A and B, right? And so therefore, there's always going to exist a hypotenuse R, and there's always going to exist an angle alpha that makes this triangle a right angle triangle. And so therefore, we can express any positive real numbers, A and B, in terms of R cosine alpha and R sine alpha, okay? And so now we've done that, let me get rid of this for now. What I'm going to do is substitute R cosine alpha in for A, and I'm going to substitute R sine alpha in for B. So let's substitute that in and see what we get. So we've got R cosine alpha multiplied by sine of theta plus R sine alpha multiplied by cosine of theta. And we want to show this is identical to the right hand side. Okay, so I'm just going to leave it like that for now. From here, I'm going to factorize out the R from both of these terms, and we get R multiplied by cosine alpha sine theta plus sine alpha cosine theta, okay? And so now I'm gonna do one change. I'm gonna switch around the order so it reads like this. So we've got R multiplied by sine of theta multiplied by cosine of alpha plus cosine of theta sine of alpha, okay? Now here's where a little trick comes in, the last trick, and we're going to use our compound angle formulas or our angle addition formulas. And if you're unsure on those, I'll link the video I've made on that in the description, okay? And I'll even bring the angle addition formulas over on the right-hand side. Okay, so I've written over there in that red box the angle addition formula for sine of theta plus alpha. And if we take a look at this highlighted part here in the bracket, well, that looks very much like what we have here. And so we could rewrite what's in that square bracket as sine of theta plus alpha. So let's do that. We get R multiplied by sine of theta plus alpha. And so we've shown that the left-hand side is identical to the right-hand side. And thus, we can rewrite something of the form A sine theta plus B cosine theta in the form of R sine theta plus alpha. Okay, And you could use a similar method to show all the other formulas are true. So A sine theta minus B cosine theta and so on. Okay, So it's pretty easy to show. So basically what this says is, say we have any linear combinations of sine thetas and cosine thetas, we can express it in one singular term of sine or cosine. So let's now look at an exam question Okay, to demonstrate using this. So say we want to express 3 sine theta plus 4 cosine theta in the form R sine theta plus alpha, where we have the the value of alpha between 0 and 90 degrees. So how do we answer a question like this? Well, first of all, I'm going to write out the 3 sine theta 
plus 4 cosine theta. Okay, and I'm going to say, well, from this first part, we know this part here I'm highlighting in the red box. Well, that's going to be equal to some value r multiplied by sine of theta plus or minus some value alpha. Okay, and because we're adding, it's going to be r sine theta plus alpha. So let's say this is equal to r multiplied by sine of theta plus alpha. Okay, from here, I'm now going to use my angle addition, okay, formulae, and use the one that I've now highlighted to say that, well, this sine of theta plus alpha is equal to sine of theta cosine of alpha plus cosine theta multiplied by sine of alpha. So we get that this is equal to r multiplied by sine of theta cosine of alpha plus cosine of theta sine of alpha. I'm now going to expand this bracket, so I'm going to multiply both of these terms by r, and we get r sine theta cosine of alpha plus r cosine theta sine of alpha, okay? And then again, I'm going to flip the order because it's multiplication, we can. So I'm just going to rewrite this as r cosine alpha sine of theta plus r sine of alpha cosine of theta. And so now I'm going to compare the coefficients. So the coefficient of sine theta is r cosine alpha. And in the original, it was three. So we know that three is going to be equal to r multiplied by cosine of alpha. And we have that r sine of alpha is equal to, well, four, the coefficient of cosine theta. So we get four is equal to r sine of alpha. So now we've got a pair of simultaneous equations. We need to solve for r and alpha. So how can we do that? Well, we could again represent this as a right angle triangle. So we get three over uh, r, sorry, not alpha, is equal to cosine of alpha. And we get four over r is equal to sine of alpha. So let's represent these in a right angle triangle. So let me draw another one like this. And so if we have the angle alpha, well, the opposite is going to be four, the adjacent is going to be three, and the hypotenuse is r by the same logic that we used earlier. Well, we could use Pythagoras to find r. We have that three squared plus four squared is gonna be equal to r squared. And that's gonna imply that r squared is equal to 25. And so therefore, our value of r is equal to five. And it's not negative five, it's not plus or minus five because we're dealing with a length. So we just wanna take the positive answer. So r is equal to five. How can we find alpha? Well, we can calculate inverse tan of the opposite over the adjacent, so four over three. And if you work that out on your calculator, so inverse tan of four over three, we get that that's equal to 53.13 degrees, the two decimal places. And now I'm gonna substitute all of that into my R sine of theta plus alpha, and we get five multiplied by sine of theta plus 53.13, okay? And that would be an equivalent uh, expression for the left-hand side that we started with. And that's our answer. So hopefully this video was useful. If it was, like, subscribe and share and go over to my channel for tons more math tutorials. Thanks for watching.